I guess the first topic that's probably on everyone's mind right now is Silver Squeeze 2.0. May 1st is the 10-year anniversary of the dramatic price drop we saw May 1st, 2011. And now a lot of people are you know, banding together to purchase silver, physical silver, on May 1st. What is your take on this whole phenomenon? And how is Miles Franklin preparing for this? And how has it already been impacted by this? Well, I think the, the one thing that I take away from it more than anything is a growing awareness uh, of silver by the mainstream in, in, in an investment capacity. That, that's really what's different than, than anything I've ever seen before is you have an expanding mindset globally, not just in North America, not just in relation to Miles Franklin. Um, I think first and foremost, uh, the dealers, I don't think, will be caught uh, off guard this time as they were February 1st and 2nd. The market last time exploded so quickly uh, that the dealers were caught off guard when they had sold so much uh, in a very short period of time over a weekend, which would have left them massively exposed naked to the open Sunday night, which many people expected to gap much higher. Uh, and that's why everyone, including Miles Franklin, shut down. Literally for us, it was the first time in, in 31 years. So I, I think the dealers are prepared. Uh, I think what I take away from it more than anything, really, truthfully, is an awareness, an awakening. I am convinced from an industrial aspect, from an industrial side of the equation, uh, that silver is the most undervalued asset on the planet. I say that because it is depleted in nature, it is becoming much, much harder to find, and the ever-expanding uses of silver in a digital world uh, is extraordinary. And when we throw in the Belt, Road, and Rail Initiative connecting 70% of human population, the need for silver in a digital capacity is extraordinary. And really what will overwhelm, I think, this market, in addition to an investment or excuse me, an industrial side of the equation that is literally uh, expanding so fast that supply can't keep up for the first time ever. You have a massive and growing international awareness of silver as a monetary investment and a damn good one. And, and really that is what is different on top of these unallocated synthetic. And when I say synthetic, I basically am talking about pooled accounts, um, non-allocated accounts, non-segregated accounts, the awareness uh, in, in regards to these accounts, pushing more and more people into buying physical segregated metal. These, these types of combinations of events, I believe, will overwhelm the supply side. And if supply and, and demand economics still exist, uh, we should see silver explosively higher uh, before this is all said and done. The former director of the U.S. Mint was recently interviewed on Kitco and was skeptical that a silver squeeze would work, that it would be able to, people buying physical metal would be able to push the price higher because it's such a giant market compared to, for example, what we saw with GameStop, like an individual stock is a lot smaller. So what is your perspective on that? Do you think silver squeeze, buying a lot of, a lot of physical silver can actually make it noticeable impact on the price? I don't know if you ever played the game Jenga when you were younger with the blocks that you pull one out at a time until the tower falls down. That's the way that I look at this. Uh, for the very first time, you're seeing pieces pulled out of the Jenga tower. And, and that comes with an awareness and a growing awareness, mostly by a demographic your age, Elijah. The, the younger demographics are waking up to this. And you're, you're seeing... Uh, I think silver being recognized around the world right now as a really, really good place to park your money. Uh, and you're also seeing, I believe, a good level of institutional size investors taking a look at this, a good hard look at it. When you look at a, uh, a world where everything is so overvalued, silver is basically the most undervalued asset on the planet. And so, I don't think silver squeeze where you're buying silver from all the dealers necessarily is what it will, will be the catalyst to, to much higher prices, but it's 
one piece in the Jenga puzzle. Uh, the, the industrial applications, the awakening of, of pulling metal out of unallocated accounts and buying physical, and the growing industry, or excuse me, uh, investment side. And, and so whether or not it actually is the event that lights the fuse, to me, it's just making people aware to what a value it really is and the continuing accumulation and expansion by more and more people, the, the awareness uh, of precious metals and hard assets as a really important place to, to have a, a piece of your investment portfolio parked away in, in something that has been viewed historically by all you know, human civilization since the beginning of time as wealth. Uh, it, to me, that's really the issue here is that these types of events um, are waking people up, and even people who have never even thought about buying metal before. They are, they are now hearing about it, interested in it, and asking questions. That is the beginning, I hope, of a, a, a larger trend uh, that we will see long past this weekend. Now, I asked viewers to submit questions, and Rick is wanting to know about the premiums we're seeing on silver. And really, since the beginning of COVID, you know, we've seen extremely high demand and therefore really high premiums. And it's been harder and harder to get physical supply of both silver and gold. He's wanting to know, have manufacturers compensated for that or started to compensate for that? Have they been able to increase the you know industrial capacity of making the coins and bars. Uh, the answer, I believe, is no. Uh, the the mints are the model of inefficiency. Uh, they they struggle to keep up. They are um, very very much in disarray. Uh, you know, we had talked about. I had talked about publicly the U.S. mint being shut down for a period of time and. While they have not officially shut down, as far as I can tell, they've hardly made a coin in the last month plus, uh, which to me is more or less shutting down. Getting Silver Eagles is next to impossible um, for most companies, and even the ones that have them, the premiums are higher than I have ever seen even one day in my career, which is 31 years. So, you know, Silver Maple Leafs here again, way, way higher. All the coins, everything is way, way higher than, than it ever, or they have ever been. And getting them, getting possession of them, getting them shipped is really incredibly difficult. So no, I don't think they've been any more efficient at all. In fact, quite to the contrary, they're, they're the model of inefficiency. And then when you see the amount of silver coming off of Comex last in March, uh, 35 million ounces and 55 million here, I believe in May or somewhere in that neighborhood, I don't know the exact number, uh, a lot, uh, a good number of them were rolled over. So the game goes on, but the, the, the amount of metal that's actually being delivered and taken off of the exchanges out of the building is extraordinary as well. And, and that might be the other side of the industrial question that could be that, you know, is that Elon Musk, is that Tesla, is that Panasonic, is it Apple or Samsung? Are the industrials waking up to the, theory of rehypothecation on the Comex and are pulling as much metal out of the building before you're not allowed to do that anymore or before they force majeure or before the whole thing blows up. So the answer is no. And I think that it, uh, I don't look to see, you know, I really don't see premiums coming down anytime soon. In fact, after we get our next allocation of silver maples, I think this Monday, the next shipment is due mid June. Uh, and that's, that's just the best, guess estimate. And we had to pay for that up front and we already have and pay really high premiums and have to wait. And that's the only way you get product. That is not ever how it was. Normally we could call and buy it and have it to us in 72 hours, not, you know, six weeks. And that's a good point you make how it doesn't seem like premiums are taking a breather. It seems like they're just staying high. And that begs the question, what is the real price of gold and silver? And a lot of people are saying, well, if you can't get one ounce rounds or one ounce coins for more than, you know, <clears throat> a high premium, then maybe that's a more accurate version of what the actual price of gold and silver are. Cyrus is wanting to know, um, and I know we've touched on this in previous interviews, but he's wanting an update on what the price or the premium actually is on one ounce silver rounds, because he says, you know, that that's probably a more accurate view of what the actual price of silver is. 
Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're really perilously close to $5 an ounce over the price of silver. Um, I don't have the exact number in front of me, but 475, 495, I mean, they're right in that range. And, uh, and you're right, that is a better reflection. Basically, you're paying five bucks an ounce over for just about anything that's legitimate. Uh, and you can uh, double that or more with Silver Eagles. And, you know, so uh, really that, that is a very, very good statement or assessment where, yeah, this is the real price of it. It's not the, the paper price. And the further away that paper price uh, shifts from reality, the, the faster uh, the the you know, the, those premiums, I think, will continue to rise as people realize that something's not right. And, and you will see, I think, the, the vultures swarm at that point. And that's when you see real uh, change, when you see real big money, institutional money start uh, requesting delivery on COMEX. And um, very quickly, then, I think things rapidly change. Now, when it comes to the kind of demand you're expecting this weekend on really the second silver squeeze, uh, which is, you know, Saturday, May 1st, what kind of demand are you expecting this weekend? I really have no idea, to be honest with you. Um, if it's anything like it was uh, in February, it, it it's nonstop craziness. Um, uh, you know, uh, our phones rang more on February 2nd than any day in the history of our company. So I know this, that I thought I was prepared from, uh, from an inventory position and a futures positioning position north of 55,000 ounces long on COMEX. We're well over double that this time and, and even more. So as far as, as business is concerned, we won't be shutting down over the weekend, uh, but uh, I can simply say that uh, if it's anything like it was in February, it will be off the charts. So hopefully uh, pretty strong and we'll have all hands on deck on Saturday. That's for sure. Bart from Holland is wanting to know what your take is on what happened last summer when we saw really from March to July, August, when we saw silver jump by $10. Why did it rise so much and why is it not rising again? Well, I mean, it was just massively undervalued, but those are the kind of games that I think we can expect to see at some point where, you know, it searches for fair value. Look, if you just divided the current price of gold uh, by, uh, by the price of silver uh, right now, you get uh, roughly 68, 69 or 70, but the average price uh, over the past 150 years has been roughly 42 to one. So if you take a, a spot price of 1770 and divide that by 42, you're going to get roughly $42. So right now you could argue that silver is, is roughly $17, $18 undervalued based upon its historical relationship uh, to gold. And if you were to divide it by eight, uh, you would get a, a more a accurate reflection of how it's currently valued in nature at an eight to one ratio. So to expect those kinds of slingshot moves with the backdrop that we see industrially and now awaking investment demand, I think they're realistic. How it happens, when it happens, that's, that's another story. And I guess, you know, I'm not as confident that the silver squeeze will be the catalyst, but what I am confident about is an awakening, a continued awakening and discussion about silver, which has been lacking forever. Uh, and that in and of itself, the more people wake up to hard money, to sound money, to, to limiting their exposure to a currency that is north of $100 trillion indebted, uh, that is going to, I think, be the move that everyone is thinking. And... Uh, where you're talking about silver being north of $100. It's realistic. I really do believe that it is realistic. And, uh, but I've learned one thing, Elijah, and that's that usually things don't play out the way that we expect. You can't run from mathematics and economics. It, it will, they will catch you over time. But normally, uh, over the last 30 years, everything I've seen, which ultimately most of the things we talked about came, came true, but never the way or the time when we thought it would. Never the catalyst, like Y2K as an example. None of the things that we had expected would be the 
that that event that lit the fuse ever were, but it's simple mathematics and simple economics ultimately with a sprinkling of old school logic that will ultimately prevail. And, and I think we're closer to that happening than ever before. Jana Ray is wanting to know about the gold-silver ratio, as you mentioned, and how really in your perspective, it still has further to fall to really have silver find its true value. So she's wanting to know, what is your perspective on should should we swap gold for silver right now? I would. Yeah, I think that um, anytime you're near 70, you should be in silver. Anytime you're below 40, you could discuss being in gold. I know some of the silver bugs will, will not like to hear that, but here's the deal. Uh, when you realize it's coming out of the ground at eight to one, when you realize it's hugely depleted, when you realize that it's massively needed in a world that is uh, growing digital by the day and growing green by the day, look, silver has never been, uh, never had these industrial uses, really. I mean, this is a new phenomenon, uh, the digital era and the green era. And so, you know, silver was thought as a, an, an investment for coins and for photography. And it's all of that accumulated knowledge that hasn't quite grasped the fact that this is a world that is increasingly becoming digital. Everything is digital now from your banking to your, your refrigerator. And so in that environment, the need for silver in an expanding environment um, is off the charts. And so, you know, silver is, is probably one of the most needed assets. There's, there's 500 ounces of silver in the tip of every Tomahawk cruise missile. So when you talk about military and a green world moving away from, from a combustion engine world and a world that, that is growing digitally, and then the expansion of Asia and Africa into this new program where connecting 70% of the world um, is huge. And, and I'd like to also take a step back and say, look, you know, the gold to silver ratio is important. You should definitely be in silver. But even maybe a bigger thing, a bigger consideration is, is this new initiative between Asia and Africa where you're connecting not only 70% of human population, but 45% of global GDP is indoctrinating seven out of 10 people on the globe into a new digital yuan. Uh, this is going to have major effects over time on the dollar. So we're looking at the double whammy, a ultimately a depreciating dollar that's being inflate, inflated away. Uh, and it, 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 silver, which is, needed it is depleted and not only is it increasing industrially but it's also increasing in a monetary sense so i look for that ratio to get closer to its natural mean right now or its uh its ratio of what's coming out of the ground and and some people think you'll see a one-to-one -one or better that's a pretty lofty expectation but to see it single digits ten to one nine to one eight to one I don't think is really that out, outrageous of a statement, uh, especially when, you know, only 30% of all the silver that's mined comes from dedicated silver mines. Of the 800 million ounces a year over the last several that have been mined, literally only 240 million or so comes from the primary silver miners. The rest comes from other mining of other metals where they just stumble across silver. It is becoming more and more and more scarce and more and more and more used and never pulled back out for um, recycling because it's used in such tiny amounts. So not only is it depleted in, in industry, it becomes destroyed basically. And so you're looking at, at something that over time will become more and more valuable just based upon uh, its necessity and the inability to find it in the ground anymore.